meeting to order. Tyler, if you want to start the recording now. Are we good and ready to go? All righty. Um, do we have any public comments come in after the agenda was sent? I did not get any public comments, questions. Okay. Um, the minutes from September's meeting, did everybody get a chance to read and approve those? I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Approved unanimously. Um, did we want to discuss the park board retreat or wait until we have everybody on? I'll just kind of introduce it and then I think maybe when you get to everybody else, we have a good discussion. But in the past, we've always done a retreat, um, you know, pulling out three or four hours a place where it was just the board and a few staff members to maybe uh, strategize for the future, kind of look at goals and vision and stuff like that, if that's something you guys are interested in doing. Uh, we haven't done it in probably at least two years, maybe three, but um, being that things are changing a little bit, uh, maybe we have a, a chance to get together. And we usually did it on a Saturday so we could clear our schedules and really uh, roll up our sleeves and kind of put some things out in the future. So something to think about and just wanted to share that with the group. And if you guys want to talk about it and we'll bring the topic back next month. What what time frame are we looking at having that? We've typically done them in December. And um, like I said, we, we have done them on a Saturday, but we don't have to do it on a Saturday but uh, something where we can just really um, clear our schedules and, and just kind of roll up our sleeves. Sounds good. Um, continuation. Did we do one last year at Botanica? I think the last one we did was at the Great Plains Nature Center. Is that right? Well, we did get together last year at Botanica. Yeah, I thought the last one was at Botanica. We did? <laughs> oh, yeah. we did. I don't think everybody was there, though, Troy. I think it was only, but I do remember we us getting together last year at Botanica okay. on Saturday morning. Was I there? I don't remember being there. You were there as well. <laughs> but I don't well, know if it was officially a retreat or or what. That was a year ago, so it's kind of <laughs> So you guys think about it. Let me know. We can put the logistics together. All right. Um, continuation of prior business, uh, Clap Park updates. All right. So we got our world famous and super awesome team uh, of PJ and Hank here to go over what we've been working on. Um, I think they've done this presentation a couple times, so they should be pretty pretty good at it. They have a PowerPoint and kind of just kind of go over some of the things that we've been finalizing and kind of putting the vision together for Clap. I'll hand it off to uh, EJ. Well, great. Thanks, Roy. Uh, Troy, we uh, just get, we want to give everybody a, a bit of an update uh, where we are as of this time. Um, we got a brief agenda. Hang on the next slide. Or you want to uh, we're going to go over the concept summary and what we heard from the public. We've got the site plan updates, and then we have a series of enlargement plans that uh, we're that Hank's going to go through with us, and then we'll uh, open it up for just questions and answers uh, that you all might have. So, if you remember, we had three concepts that we took out to the public. The first one was what we called the Great Lawn, so it had kind of this large open space through here. The main features of that concept were the loop drive. There's a very large central lawn space, as I mentioned. And then there's a gathering area adjacent uh, to Harry and Oliver. And the second concept, which we call the promenade, was uh, 
kind of had more of a up, uh, you know, just up on Harry Road, more of a pastoral type entry drive. Really had a, a vibrant kind of central gathering space that has multiple opportunities for for programming throughout the year. Had a suggestion of perhaps some neighborhood retail here, and then a sports cafe with activities. So an idea you could come in and uh, you know play play a bags game and maybe get a little something to eat, perhaps something to drink with your with your family or your friends. And then the third concept was Prairie Edge, which again had another kind of central lawn space. We had this prairie entry as you come in off Harry, and then it has multiple activity nodes that were kind of placed placed uh, specifically in key locations around the park. And this also introduced divided boulevards coming into the park, much like the uh, concept two did. So believe it or not, through the, we had, there was a separate post for each one of those concepts and we had 230 comments between those three posts, which was just phenomenal. So we had to take all those comments, we put them in a spreadsheet, tried to figure out you know, where, what were the major things we heard, a lot of them, really didn't come out and say, I want this one. Um, it was more just commenting in general about likes and dislikes. Uh, we did, however, have uh, 19 uh, true votes on which concept that particular individual felt. Um, with that, so what we heard, the, the overall general comments, the three that really rose to the top were that we just saw a lot of uh, the more bike infrastructure, uh, there were con some concerns about overdevelopment and too much concrete and just really respecting the you know this wonderful open space that we've got uh, for this part of the city and they wanted to preserve as much of that as possible um, then the actual up and down votes uh, the first concept the great lawn had four positive and zero negative the second one at uh, uh, the promenade had four positive but one negative and the third the prairie edge had nine positive and one negative. So with that, what we attempted to do then is kind of pull those together. And what you see in front of you is really kind of a composite of pr pretty much a concept, uh, the, the two center concepts. So with that, I'll just briefly kind of orient you here. So here we have Harry and then Oliver on the right-hand side here. We've got a, an entry coming in off of Harry where the existing entry is now with a divided median that comes through the park. We have a a large central gathering space here, then we have a, another activity spot here. The parkway then cuts across the creek and then would have a right in, most likely a right in, right out connection to Oliver with another activity node down in this area. Then along, here's Meadow Lane here, then another activity, I'll just go ahead and say, this is where golf, the disc golf is. And then our kind of our fifth activity node in this area. So with that, I'm going to let Hank go through kind of the enlargements and sp specifically describe to you all what's involved in each one of those in each one of those areas. So as PJ kind of mentioned, I'm going to do a quick run through on some of the different blow up areas. Uh, he kind of gave you a general orientation on those. Uh, the first area that we want to look at, though, is really coming in on the main, main primary entry off of Harry Street here. Uh, PJ mentioned the divided entry um, boulevard that would carry through the park. Um, very pastoral um, with the native grasses that carry through. Also providing a little bit of a buffer to the residents off to the west. Um, we've got a pathway that meanders through. And then what we've also got is a prairie overlook that would kind of spiral up to an upper level overlook so that you can look out to the north and to the east and really take in uh, this activity node that we've got sitting out here. Um, within there, where there are two parking uh, lots. Uh, we are going to look at phasing those over time and what's going to be necessary depending on the development that gets built within each phase. Uh, one parking uh, area on the east or on the west side is uh, 110 spaces and 111 on the east side. Now, within the actual activity node itself, we're looking at a bistro um, with a patio. Uh, more than likely, we've looked at um, this potentially having a secondary level on the upper deck that might overlook the green down below. Um, we've got a band shell here that would be a dual sided band shell that would have uh, foldable doors or rollable doors that would allow it to open up to the north and have some terrace seating to the north or potentially open to the south and really 
open to this large green space that we uh, the plaza space that we've got out there um, for even smaller gatherings, maybe some small movie nights, um, some different uh, festival gatherings. And then we, we've also got out here is a farmer's market or an all seasons pavilion. This will likely have restrooms in it, uh, maybe even a small catering kitchen um, and have a large um, open area in between, potentially with roll up doors uh, that could be used and heated in the winter time so it can be used year round. Within this space as well, I mentioned we kind of got this central green here. And within that, we see that having um, a large overhead shade structure uh, for those of you that have been to Kansas City, think of something maybe like Crown Center out there where they have a space large enough underneath that to really accommodate for um, ice skating or um, other smaller activities. And then off to the north, up towards the intersection of Harry and Oliver, we have what we're calling the Aviation Hill. Think of a very sculptural um, landform that is put into the hills or that is put into the land there to allow people to come out, um, watch airplanes fly over, um, go out at night and look up at the sky. Um, and even potentially in the wintertime would even allow for some uh, sledding activities through there. As you come down off of Oliver Street, um, you can see where the creek actually enters the site underneath Oliver. And what we're proposing is based on what we've heard previously in the public meetings is a frustration with the amount of trash um, that's within the creek way there. So we're looking at a number of different ways to actually collect that trash before it enters the creek way. Um, we've got a four bay system here. And then you can kind of see in this image below, there's a series of nets that can be added to those uh, culverts. Uh, to really filter and clean up all the trash coming in here uh, before it gets downstream. While we're talking about the water system here as well, you'll see in the plans that we've got three separate water bodies um, that are not online with the channel. They're actually offline, which makes it easier to um, get approved by the, the Corps of Engineers. And we see those as helping to mitigate for some of the flood concerns for the neighbors downstream of this park site, and but also provide a opportunity for um, some recreational activities out there as well. Within the area further to the south on the south side of the boulevard coming in off the entry, I mentioned here was the um, Prairie Overlook. We have a parking lot that's opposite of the one to the north with 84 spaces. And those that parking lot actually serves a number of different uses. So we've got here what's labeled number one. We've got those as cornhole courts. So um, almost kind of like a horseshoe pits or, or washers. Um, these would be formalized courts that would allow for activities there. And then we've got a support structure, a small park pavilion that would uh, also provide um, some services to people utilizing that. At the end of the parking lot here, we've got a larger shelter. We see this being probably a 65 plus capacity shelter. Um, we've also looked at roll up doors on this to allow for some year round um, activities. And within the, that would actually serve a large destination playground. Um, this is something that would draw people from throughout the region um, and provide some activities that you don't see at all of your typical local park facilities. So something that would really draw in people to really come and visit this area. And then in this location here, uh, we have a large natural spray ground in this location. And think of a lot of natural rocks, uh, sprays coming down out of, or out of the concrete, um, jets mounted in in boulders and even potentially some waterfall features or some runnels as part of that. Off further to the east, we've got what we're calling um, an activity node here that would serve for uh, 94 spaces in this parking lot. And within there, it would serve four half court basketball courts. Um, We've got four pickleball courts and then a pump track within there. Uh, the pump track would be something new. 
um, that would really create some activity that you really don't see in that area um, and just provide for some activities for some of the, the kids and uh, BMX people in the, in the crowd. And then further off to the west, we're seeing this as more of a neighborhood um, parking or neighborhood park node. Uh, this provides access with a parking lot here for 32 spaces. Um, and this just really provides a nice gathering area for the residents off to the west. Um, we have a smaller neighborhood level park playground, um, likely a smaller park pavilion with, that would be able to accommodate about 16 people and likely have restrooms as part of that. And then also incorporate what we were showing here as a uh, neighborhood level dog park that would be fenced all the way around um, and provide access for small and large dogs. The final note that we want to touch on is really what PJ noticed was the uh, disc golf course uh, pavilion here on the south side. Um, this is a smaller 30 person capacity um, pavilion with a small parking lot off of it to really serve the disc golfers the, that would be able to access this. All of the, the holes would start and end at this pavilion. And really as part of that, you can see we try to utilize this open space on the south side as much as possible. One thing that we heard a lot of was that um, people wanted to preserve the natural elements that are still out there um, in this park. And we feel like utilizing the northern half for more of the the higher level activity and keeping the south side and the west side uh, more passive would really fit with the uh, neighborhood context and surroundings that we're seeing here. Uh, one other item that we've got uh, adjacent to the creek and we've noticed in this location here, there's a lot of majestic uh, cypress trees along the creekway here and it creates a really nice space out there that people can go out there um, set up a hammock, maybe even set up a small table um, and play checkers or chess or even uh, games. Uh, just a nice, quiet, serene space that we really want to take advantage of. So uh, you can see that what we've got here in the images is a hammock grove in this location. So with that, here's the here's the final or the you know the current plan we just talked about again. So with that, we're uh, Happy to answer any questions or, or discussion you all might have. No questions? I think I do. Hello. Uh, Hank? Yes. Some of your other designs had uh, more legs tied in uh, with the uh, creek bed um, and basically amounted to uh, a series of dams uh, that would uh, retain water uh, and offer a containment overflow for um, uh, and a mitigation process for flooding downstream. Uh, how do you plan on handling uh, the uh, flooding that uh, continues to take place that goes through there? So within here, you can see we've got the series of three different water bodies here, and we're working with uh, Bauman and Associates, who's our civil engineer on this project. Um, we haven't gotten into a lot of the detail of that yet, um, but we've been told that there's ways that we can set up um, overflows within the creek to, that would uh, drain into these ponds, which would help to mitigate for some of that flooding downstream that we've been seeing. Um, this would allow for a slower release of water over time and really provide an amenity out there um, for residents to use within the park facility itself. Uh, by keeping these offline, we save a lot in regards to permitting and dealing with FEMA. Um, that process is never an easy process, and uh, we've got several projects that we've been working through that right now, and uh, it, it really turns into uh, a much more difficult situation to really get your permits approved and really get the park facilities open. Are you working with 
uh, Tulsa Corps of Engineers? Yes, our Bauman will be working with them, yes. Okay. Uh, we, I found them very easy to work with. Uh, so uh, you, if you're going to be moving a lot of dirt, you'll have a chance to use some uh, underground tiling, uh, and uh, those can uh, hold the water, and uh, then you end up putting dirt back on top. So you can actually uh, gain some uh, ground space that way. Yeah, we've used that on uh, other projects previously with a lot of su success. So I think as we dig into the details of this more um, past the master plan, uh, we can start looking at BMPs and some of the other um, stormwater drainage approaches that will be utilized for the project. Overall, all out of the design, it uh, incorporates uh, more shelters than uh, I, had, I expected to have, but uh, very nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Just to add in a, a quick comment on that, Hoyt, once we get a little bit more of a master plan in place, we'll spend some time with our stormwater folks and talk about some of the things that you were just mentioning. Uh, they're going to have to help us with taking the lead on some of that stuff. but. Uh, just because it's not in the master plan right this second doesn't mean that we won't look at it later on down the road and we'll need the city manager to uh, lead us through that a little bit. We need his direction. Oh, I believe you on that. We may end up with more, more ponds. One other thing I wanted to add as well, and this is uh, for Hank and PJ. I have a meeting later on this week with the school district to talk about that parking lot right next to the dog park. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to hear what they got to say and see if they have anything to add. I've shared this plan with them so they, they know. This is kind of an update from last week on Friday when we last talked. I got a call over the weekend from the school district. So um, that might be something that we might have to change up a little bit but like i said just because it's uh, not in the plan right now doesn't necessarily mean we don't design it a little bit differently later on down the road absolutely okay great um thank you hank and pj appreciate the updates no problem um next we have aquatics master plan art and aesthetics so last month Brian gave you guys a really good up overview of a lot of things that are going on with the Aquatics Master Plan. And on the way in this morning, I heard him on the radio. He was talking um, <laughs> from our, uh, I guess it's the mayor's press release on Thursdays. And so Brian was featured and, and he was on the radio this morning talking a little bit in more depth about the aesthetics. And so he's gonna go over the aesthetics a little bit more for the phase two. Um, which will be hopefully bidding out pretty soon. So it's all yours, Brian. Make sure they can see the screen. Hello, can everybody hear me today? Yep. Yes, loud and clear. see the screen? Yeah. All right, we're two for two. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll go ahead and give again. Um, I talked to you guys last month about uh, the plans. Uh, for phase two but here we're going to kind of dive in a little bit more to some of the aesthetic concepts uh some of the thinking that went behind the ideas what exactly it's going to look like and uh the benefit and some of the enhancements that this is going to add to our facilities so once again we're discussing um the municipal pool and harvest pool renovated projects as well as the conversion of linwood pool into the water playground and we're going to start with talking about the linwood uh water playground splash pad um as you can see, it's still the basic footprint uh, that the pool currently occupies. Uh, we did retain the building here at the bottom and uh, some shade structure. We're adding quite a bit more shade and a lot of lounge areas. We've got these awesome um, artificial turf berms going in for people to lounge and relax and you know, be able to watch the kids, really trying to make that family experience more. So it's not just you know a little area for kids to go splash in water. We want the full family um, to be able to enjoy every aspect out here. Uh, the theme for this project was kind of a kind of a lost in the wilderness and nature um, kind of callback to a uh, time back before like nature's kind of reclaimed a certain area. 
um, hydraulic street was close to where some of the um, old water mills wheels were uh, back in Wichita's history. And so we're actually adding one in this area. We'll kind of show a picture later. It shows a little bit better. But like I said, this is kind of like nature's reclaimed this area, and this is where people have found it. I'm really excited for the idea. As you can see here, there's quite a bit of these uh, seating areas for people to watch their children while they're playing. There's a slight little stream that kind of flows between the two areas that drains down. It's not gonna be like pooled water that we have to worry about, um, you know, people having a lifeguard or that or not. It'll just be a continuous flow of water through these two spots with areas to walk over. Um, here's some more of the aesthetic concepts, talking about the water wheel, kind of the inspiration for it. We're super excited to see how these little uh, jumping boulder uh, mounds become. It's kind of a newer concept. We're one of the first places to try it. It's a play structure that people, that kids can kind of bounce on and we're adding some turf to it and there'll be a little bit of water misting over them to make them kind of fun. Uh, super fun. Uh, I think it's gonna be exciting for the kids to enjoy. Here shows that concept of the water wheel about kind of the height comparison. Unfortunately, uh, the wheel will not be turning. It's stagnant, but there'll be some splash features near it. Um, there's a kind of a picture showing what those uh, play structures look like without the turf on them uh, that we're adding. And then there's just kind of a design, a little log that kids can kind of walk across, stuff like that. Like I said, it's not actual water um, like that's going to be pooling there. It's just kind of a flow of the channel as it goes. Um, but like I said, a real fun concept for this splash pad. For harvest, um, you know, one thing we talked about last time was one of the big pushes of the pools was really pulling the fence line away from the pool basin to give people more of a area to like enjoy the actual total facilities. I mean, it's not just all about the water, it's about the entire experience while you're there. So here we've added a lot of the turf berms for people to uh, you know, hang out in, sunbathe, uh, lounge areas, the nice little fun shade structure here that stretches out by our toddler area. I, I plan personally to spend quite a bit of my time right here in the summer watching uh, my kids play in this area, especially with this new slide going in. I think this is gonna be exciting. Here's once again, some of the elements that we talked about with the slide that's going in, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of shade. This is that rental structure that we talked about with the uh, toddler slide. And there's a kind of a concept, artist concept of what the uh, lattice straight structure is gonna look like. But from the aesthetic standpoint, uh, we took the theme from this one at the actual name, the harvest, the bounty of the harvest. And things that you see in nature um, that involves like the life cycle. We have these uh, kind of wheat structures that are kind of going in, water lilies and columns that are gonna be falling on this uh, ledge here. Uh, that people can see, it kind of just adds a nice little aesthetic element. Um, talking about the life cycle, we're gonna have a lot of tadpoles and frogs. Uh, those would be kind of on reliefs on some of the other carved walls throughout the facility. And one thing that we did task our artists to do is we already the, we have a nice renovated bathhouse that was replaced a few years ago, but we are not replacing this filter building right here. The filter building is staying. And so we've asked them to try to find ways to kind of make it fit more into the theme, make it look, look, it um, needs to be there. So they're gonna add a lot of coloring on the outside and around it, um, showing pictures of the cicadas and things like that. Uh, but overall, like I said, I like the lifestyle, the life cycle inspiration that we've gone with. Um, it should be really fun. So from the history buff standpoint, I really like this next one, once we get the slide to move forward. Just kidding. There we go, Manissa. Ooh, it's, it's a day. Once again, Manissa, um, we pulled out the fence line as much as we could. We are kind of bare, we have a bare, uh, boundary issues with the river here to the east, and then we have the uh, parking lot with the shelter to the south. But we did still were able to spread out the fencing a little bit, add some more of those turf berms, uh, more fun areas for the people to lounge and uh, to enjoy some great quality family time. Once again, some of the new amenities going in, you've got the uh, zero depth entry area, shade structures, a fun little drop slide. We purposely kept this corner of the uh, pool kind of area for open for people to, la uh, to play in and have fun. We've got a great uh, young adult teenage population that really visits this pool and they literally will spend all their time here just kind of hanging in this area and talking and socializing so um, we've kept that area for them to enjoy hopefully we don't have as much of the six feet distancing requirements at some point in the future so they can still hang out but uh, this would be a good spot for them um, the aesthetics for this one of the elements we wanted to keep true to a lot of the other architecture and a lot of the other aesthetics around the area there's a strong Native American uh, presence um, in this area. 
Um, so we're actually going to go and we have this nice little fascia relief that's already currently at the pool. We're going to uh, fix those up and uh, make them look a little better. We had a couple that were starting to rot, some that are not looking as great. So we're going to clean them up um, and, and reinstall them. We've added uh, more life, life uh, cycle things that you've seen, like the great blue heron, the otter. There will be little surprises all around. And then the art sculpture is actually going to double as a shade structure slash kind of a history lesson. It's a replica of a Wichita summer lodge that was actually built on Mead Island, not too far from Municipal Pool, um, almost 100 years ago that was gifted to the citizens of Wichita. So there's the pictures of the actual grass lodge when it was created. And so these were some elements that they did, drew the inspiration. And the uh, concept now looks like a structure that's going to look like this. Um, so it's going to provide, there's kind of a person standing by it. It will provide shade. It'll be able to put some tables under that people can enjoy a picnic. And there'll be some information that kind of cocks back to the history of the grass lodge, you know, why it was important and why it has this historical significance here in Wichita. So that's um, the aesthetics for phase two in a nutshell. Happy to ask, uh, answer any questions that you guys have. You guys are gonna let me off easy again. All right, I appreciate it. So yeah, just thank let you, you guys that was know. great. Easy. Yeah, just to let you guys know, uh, we're taking this to council next Tuesday. And once that happens, we could go back out to bid and start the project. And the idea is to get this done by summer next year. Um, it's gonna be close. Uh, phase one, most definitely. I think, uh, in fact, a lot of folks have commented that they've seen a lot of the dirt moving and things changing at some of our other facilities that that are in phase one, but we'll be close, but we'll do our best to get this all done by summer. Very good. All right. Chester Lewis Park. So just want to give you guys an update and we've been, I think I shared with you guys that we were approached by the medical school that's right behind Chester I. Lewis. And if you haven't noticed, there's been some huge demo going on uh, there and right next door. So the footprint of the park is actually expanding. We are still working on the design and I promised you guys that you guys are gonna get a chance to see that soon. Uh, but unfortunately we kind of slowed down having to go through a lot of different steps and processes working with some of the stakeholders. So we're still working on that, but we have hired a uh, art consultant actually is a team of two that are working on this and so they're going to start working with some of the art into the uh, proposed design and once we get through that process we'll be able to bring you guys uh, some of the designs and, and show you guys what it kind of looks like um, but pretty excited working with the, uh, uh, the medical school there and some of the other stakeholders downtown uh, there's a lot of interest in making this a, a really nice park um, so it'll, it'll be representative of um, Chetri Lewis's, uh, some of his most significant things that he's done in his life and has, has had an impact on the African-American community. So that's part of the theme that's gonna go in with some of the art. And so pretty excited about that. But uh, I, I, I thought by now I'd be able to bring you guys a design, or at least a, uh, um, a draft of a design, some preliminary concepts and we're not there yet, but we have time. It's not like uh, we have a huge deadline on this one by no means, so. Troy, just right. to confirm, the park's staying in the same location where it was previously, or it's, is it? are we relocating the park itself? It's at the same location. It's just getting a little bit bigger. Okay. The lot that's actually right next to it is actually gonna be part of it. Um, so it's gonna, expand by mm, 30, 35%, it's gonna expand. Thank you. Um, thanks, Troy. Uh, ready for the recreation updates from Reggie.
All right, are you guys able to hear me on that end? Loud and clear. Yep. All right. So I want to give you guys a brief overview of some of the activities that we have going on uh, from the uh, month of September. One of the big things that we started back off with uh, was a partnership with uh, USD uh, 259 and Colvin Elementary School to offer the Latsky program for before and after school. Uh, we have uh, that program up and going. Uh, one of the big things that we did at the beginning of the year had to make some accommodations for the COVID restrictions. So we've implemented that all of the kids are wearing masks that are there on site. We also uh, have individual packets that the kids use for activities so they're not sharing any of those items. And any of the things that they use that are kind of used together are quarantined for 72 hours after they actually are uh, used. So we have some additional tables and chairs that we use that we're wiping down for them to actually be assigned to the area that they're using. And we currently have about 25 students that are enrolled in the program with uh, the hybrid learning going on. But the program is completely free to those individuals who attend the school and as to uh, a funding that we've actually received through the house and the uh, uh, development department to, to fund that particular program. All right. So uh, Ed Edgemore Rec Center is up next. Uh, we begin our fall programming there on uh, September the uh, 14th. Have gotten a lot of good uh, attendance for some of those classes with the restrictions that we have in place. You'll see there that some of those classes are, are actually doing really well with the attendance that we have there. Uh, we had the Lighted Up Edgeboard group that did an event on Saturday the 19th uh, that had uh, for the lights that they're looking to put in place there for that particular facility and they were able to raise $3,000 this year uh, towards that particular project. So their long-term goal is uh, looking at wanting to add some lights to those courts there to extend the hours they can actually use it for tournaments and other things that take place there. Uh, so we also had... Uh, So they also held a, a social event that was there at the, the pickleball courts and did a glow stick uh, tournament that there on site that had 80 participants that attended. Uh, it was a pretty unique event that we had. The, the volunteer group came out and actually hosted it on site in conjunction with our center director. Had DJ there that played music and also had a really good turnout for the community to come out and support it. So looking at more and more of those uh, creative things that we can do to keep the uh, pickleball community engaged that's uh, continually growing here in the area. So Evergreen Rec Center is uh, one of those locations that we're looking at doing some different programming to try to expand some of the things that we're doing there. Uh, we implemented a new salsa dance class that started this fall and it was the first time it was offered for a while. We had nine people to register for that particular class. Also offered a, a taekwondo class that was offered there for the first time in a while to have 10 participants there. And we're also looking at community partnerships that we can do some things there to help meet some of the needs for the community uh, with schools starting back in. So we rented out a portion of the facility there to uh, the, the health department that they use and they're doing uh, immunizations there on site from nine to four every Thursday for those students who are going back to school that need to have those, uh, those immunizations done for the requirements for the school district. So I mentioned previously about uh, some of the changes that we're doing there at uh, Great Plain Nature Center. Uh, we do get did get a new person that's on site there that's handling uh, the uh, exhibits there. Uh, his name is Todd. Uh, he's doing a lot of creative things there with implementing some uh, programming that we're doing there for the community. Uh, we've opened it up where we actually have some times that are there where the community can come out and see some of the feeding time that he had with the animals. Uh, it's at noon on the weekends and we have a really big uh, turnout for that particular 
uh, activity. We've uh, started reaching out to get more volunteers to help with that because of the demand we have there. And as part of our uh, partnership with uh, GPNC, we're able to use some of their staff there to actually help with some of those things with feeding times and offering some of the programs that we're expanding there. Uh, we're also looking to uh, expand some of that to our rec centers uh, to have some on-site exhibits there, as well as uh, work in conjunction with our summer camp program to have those young people to go on site there, as well as taking some of the animals to those locations during the summer time frame. So next up is uh, Linwood Rec Center. Uh, we uh, work with Councilman Johnson where we uh, did what's called a fireside chat, where we actually talked about some of the uh, upcoming things that are taking place there at the Linwood uh, uh, Rec Center with the uh, library moving out to a different location. So we got some feedback from the community on some of the things that they're looking to have in place there. Uh, we have the Wichita Police Department there with the uh, patrol officer in that area that was involved with that to open up communications on what things are going to happen there as part of that transition. So we're going to continue that dialogue as we move forward to see what things will be offered in that space once the library actually moves out uh, in 2021. So the Boxes on site there where people can actually turn in their ballots and uh, as part of it to make sure it's secure and being monitored they did put in some uh, security system that's being monitored by the county as well that they can have a good eye on what's taking place at those boxes on the weekends and evening time frame when we don't have staff there on site and one of the other big things that we've noticed there at Linwood with everything going on with COVID is increased uh, uses of the parks for joggers bikers and dog walkers uh, in general, so that means that we're getting a lot more activity there. So that means David guys are out more with having to pick up trash and look for other things that are happening there. Unfortunately, we are seeing some uptick in some of uh, the, the graffiti in the area as well, just with the uh, extended use of the of the park. But it's a good thing to see a lot of people out there active and using the space there. And kind of lastly, uh, we talked about uh, the drive boo new event that we have uh, that's scheduled out at Watson Park this year is our drive through experience for kids to come out and do some trick or treating. Uh, we've gotten 36 vendors that have signed up for the event already. Uh, looking for, forward to a good turnout there. We're anticipating to have uh, about 2,000 uh, people to come out for the event. And we're prepared to, to have candy for those individuals once they come on site there. Uh, put in a route for it to try to make it as easy as possible with them getting in and out and also working with uh, uh, WPD to help with uh, some of the traffic control as well with coming into the park and exiting also. So it's kind of the last of what we had going on for the month of uh, September our overview and I'll open it up if you guys have any questions for me as well. No questions? All right, thank you, Reggie. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, golf update from Troy Hendricks. Uh, thanks, Troy. Uh, everybody should have got a copy of the uh, rounds report here this weekend. Uh, September rounds were great. Uh, we had 19,976 rounds uh, compared to 14,755 in the month of, of September of 2019. Going back through the years, uh, that's the most rounds played in September since 2014, which was with a five course system. Our revenue was up for the month by about $151,000, uh, making this the best in the last five years. Expenses were up as well. Uh, some of that's administrative charges that were posted uh, since the September is the end of the third quarter. Um, Auburn Hill uh, continues to be up 19% in rounds. Tex Consolver is down uh, 4%. Uh, which is really not too bad. Uh, Sim is down about 3%, but both those courses were closed for seven weeks uh, in the spring. McDonald's still shows the most improvement with uh, an increase of 22% in rounds. Um, when we look at uh, uh, memberships, our memberships are still uh, moving, going along strong. Our memberships have grown slightly since last month. I think we're at uh, uh, 1150, I think is what it was last year for the, the report that I gave. And we're at 1164. We've seen a little bit of increase in seniors and young adults. Um, so we're, we're still we're holding our own there. Things we, our target was to get to a thousand uh, by the end of uh, July of this year, and we have done that and also exceeded that. 
<clears throat> and looking at projections, uh, that was one of the questions that was asked. Uh, when we look at our nine months of revenue uh, so far this year, uh, we've had a little over three million uh, eighty-one thousand five hundred thirty-three dollars is what our, our revenue is. Uh, for the first nine months and then utilizing the same methodology that uh, finance used this spring when we were looking at how, what they thought we needed to cut coming out of the, uh, the closures um, and utilizing the same revenue projections for October, November, and December of this year, uh, we should be around 3569000 uh, at the end of the year. Uh, our expenses are down, uh, so we're about 2641000 at the end of September. Using that same methodology, we'd be at about three million four hundred fifty-six thousand, which would give us about a hundred and thirteen thousand uh, dollars uh, of net income, uh, which would be uh, a good thing considering we lost quite a bit of revenue here in, in the spring. Uh, the equipment replacement fund, um, using that same methodology, uh, through the end of the first nine months, we generated one hundred or sixty-one thousand dollars in uh, uh, revenue. Uh, looking at what we did in October, November, December of last year, that put us about $80,000 plus the money that we will charge uh, for equipment replacement fund to all of our members here in November. We're estimating about 39000 there, so that put us about 119000 which would be uh, comparable to 2019, a little more than 2018, uh, which is good because prior to that, the way we paid for uh, equipment was it might be in our budget, but if we didn't have the revenue, uh, to pay for it, then we weren't able to buy any new equipment. So this actually puts money specifically into that account, uh, which we've been allowed. We've been able to buy a couple of things. We just bought a new, new to us, to use more with 550 hours of uh, uh, hours on it. Uh, it's a wide area rough mower for Auburn Hills. Retails for about 57,000. We got delivery of that the second of September. We were able to pay thirty thousand dollars for that, and our new big grinder that we use for all all the golf courses use that. Uh, for grinding their cutting units uh, that's on order it should be here any day uh, that's price tag was forty seven thousand dollars that we're paying for out of the equipment replacement fund concession sales at the golf courses continues to be up we're up 14 percent for the month of uh, uh, september over last year uh, as a division sim was up 15 percent uh, auburn hills is down three mac continues to show great improvements there they're up 83 percent and Texas and Solver was uh, up 1%, so they essentially broke even for the month. Greens fees for addition were up for the month without any adjustment to the membership fees. Uh, we were up $23,000 in greens fees without the adjustments. When we factor in the adjustments, we were up 51% in greens fees. With uh, uh, SEM being up 45%, uh, Auburn Hills up 58%, uh, MAC up 76%, and Texas and Solver up 61%. Cart revenues continue to be strong because we're seeing more people playing and riding. Uh, we're up 32% uh, year to date for or for the month to date for the month of September. Uh, SEM is up 28%, uh, Auburn Hills 31%, McDonald was up 54%, and Texas and Solver was up 20%. Range business has been great. Everybody's coming that's been coming back to golf is practicing because they want to play a little bit better than they first came back. Uh, Auburn Hills was up 92% for the month, uh, and Texas and Saw was up 81%. Uh, so overall, when we factor in the new range with McDonald's, we're up 155% in range revenues. We had uh, a significant uh, electrical service problem at, uh, at SIM. Our, our service line that comes in from one of the, the poles on the uh, property just north of the golf course, uh, we had that electrical service line shorted out right before Labor Day weekend. We got temporary service put in place. Uh, we're working with Weststar or Evergy now because uh, we're going to have to have probably move a, a, a pole because of the new development that's going in on that property where the current electric pole is it sits right in the middle of what the driveway would be going into that new new uh, subdivision so we're working with evergy we're working with our engineers downstairs uh, to get all this laid out so that we can get it fixed um, it's coming it's coming in a little more than what i thought it was going to be this electrical service repair is going to be between 40 to forty five thousand um, dollars it's a uh, 440 amp service so it's a large, large service. Um, it's, it's, uh, it is 
what it is. I mean, we don't have a choice. We either water the golf course or we don't. Right now we're running on some temporary service that they got hooked up for us. Um, but we should have it uh, fixed here hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days. Our golf staff is looking forward to getting back to two, getting away from single rider carts and get back to two rider carts. Um, we've seen a significant amount more damage this year, especially since the 1st of July when we haven't had much rainfall with the additional cart traffic of four carts in a group. Um, so we're seeing some more damage in places that uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, more wear and tear going into the winter time here. I know it's hard to imagine winter when it's in the the weather has been the way it is, but uh, we're not that far off from it getting where the grass will start stop growing, uh, and the, the damage that we have now and we incur over through the winter will take quite a bit of time in the spring for it to heal up. Um, the Golf Advisory Committee uh, asked at their last meeting to look at a possibility of some cart fee increases. We're going to be putting some together together information, and we're sending that out to them next week. So we'll have a chance to review that, and then we'll discuss it at our next golf advisory committee meeting. Uh, that's all I have at this time. Any any questions for me? I have a question. Okay. So in this section, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, the two vacancies in the uh, golf advisory committee. And I did talk to Ty a little bit earlier today, and he has not selected anybody and and uh, I just wanted um, to share with you guys it's really important that we get this done so I, I know Alejo I know you're working on that as well so hopefully by next month you guys can bring that so we can actually get those folks on the golf advisory committee because there's going to be a lot of decisions to make in the near future so um, if you guys can make sure that that happens I'd really appreciate it if you need some help um, whatever it takes uh, let me know Mr. I think Hendricks. Hoyt has his hand up. Yes, please. Um, Mr. Hendricks, uh, wondering about the uh, golf adjustment. The, you said there was a green, uh, the greens adjustment fees for the, uh, uh, you had, you had the rounds and then you had a greens number and then you had an adjustment. It was about a, 20 30 percent adjustment to each right. one of your courses what was that about uh our greens fees that just what's paid at each one of the golf courses when a golfer comes in they pay their 23 dollars or 25 dollars to pay golf right. uh our, our greens fees were up twenty three thousand dollars on just people coming in and paying greens fees for the month of september so what we've been doing all year long is taking our membership fees that are paid on a monthly basis and then allocating that back out to each one of the golf courses based on rounds played by members at each one of those golf courses, which that was about $85,000 for the month of September. So when you factor that in, then the golf division is up 51% in greens fees. Ah, I forgot about the membership added in to the, besides the direct. Okay, yes. thank you. That's a good answer. Appreciate okay. it. No problem. Any other questions or comments? All right, thanks, Troy. Thank you. Um, Troy Helpman, do we have any Parks Foundation updates? So I sat in the last meeting and I wanna thank Alejo. He sat in, in the last meeting as well. Um, it was a pretty brief meeting talking still about how to spend the Plates for Parks money. Right now, we've collected over $160,000 from the Plates for Parks. And I was looking around, I saw a plate that was a D series, probably uh, in the 600 area. So that's 3,600 plates that have been sold so far. Um, looks like we're getting about 15 grand a month now, pretty steady revenue going in for that. So the discussion is how to spend that money. What kind of projects could we use to spend that money, how can we uh, publicize and promote the plates to go along with a, a really nice capital improvement project? Um, so there's several that are on the on the table to talk about, but they have not yet the 
the committee that that's working on this has not yet decide how they wanted to evaluate projects and prioritize them. So that's something they're still working on, but we're really pushing for a couple projects that we're interested in. Hopefully we could get their support. Um, and Alejo, uh, I'll let him talk about this, but something that we've been talking about in the past and uh, when I first started on here in Wichita, we had a member that was on both boards um, and we've always talked a little bit about kind of making that connection a little bit stronger. And so Alejo made a suggestion that maybe he could be that person, but um, it was just something that we talked about, but I, I think it would be, need the support from the park board if you guys decide that maybe that's something, maybe I'm, I'm volunteering him for something he doesn't want to do. I should I should let him uh, talk about that. No, you're, thank you, thank you, Troy. Um, and I want to thank you, Troy, and the staff uh, at the Parks Department for connecting me with the, with the Parks Foundation Board. Uh, this this all really stemmed out of um, that I, I got several requests from uh, several constituents in district one that wanted to learn more about how we could use the plates for parks to fund uh, the lighting of Edgemore Park and specifically the pickleball courts. And so that was where, really where this idea started of, you know, trying to better understand the relationship between the park board and the park foundation board and from from my perspective personally i wanted to better understand how how we could work together on some projects uh that maybe we things that we want to see carried out that maybe we we just haven't seen and so uh troy invited me to the meeting and they were gracious enough to have me and you know troy like to troy's point you know we have a huge resource and a huge asset with the uh with the license plates and also having a park foundation. And so I I, I don't know, I, it doesn't have to necessarily be me if there's a better candidate on the park board or that, that wants to serve and, and attend these meetings and add as a, act as a conduit between them and us. Um, I'd be happy to nominate whoever, but yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind representing the park board if that's what you what what we choose to to do with the body, but I would love to have somebody uh, from the park board represented on the parks foundation board so that they have an understanding of what we're doing and we have an understanding of what they're doing as well. And, and we don't just put it on, uh, on Troy. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All You're in. Say aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Alejo. That's a, that's a good idea. I appreciate that. Well, thank you, guys. Um, any other Parks Foundation updates, Troy? No, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, OJ Watson Park Committee update. Uh, I don't know, if Brian, are you still there? Uh, he's left out already. Okay. So something that we need to work on, trying to get some uh, adjusted prices to the project that we have out there for the four season shelter. What we're going to do is end up waiting until after Christmas and in the uh, next next fiscal year we have another hundred thousand dollars that we could tap into to work on that project so that's what we're going to end up doing because it was it costs too much but there's uh so much in there that we want to make sure we keep so we're going to just wait and use those dollars to go towards that project so that's a little disappointing but uh you know we always have to be a little bit patient so other than that i think uh, oj watson is doing great with uh, their programming, they're doing Halloween, they're doing some other great projects as well. So I'm, I'm just really kind of proud of those folks of really being creative and thinking outside the box during COVID. So pretty good stuff. Great. Do we have any other aquatics master plan updates? I do not. I think Brian covered it pretty well. Um, if you guys have any other questions, though, feel free to give me a call. All right, and then I have no president updates. Do you have any remaining directors updates? 
I do not. I think, uh, well, just in general, things are starting to come back to normal, but we are just kind of managing the whole COVID situation. So uh, we had movies in the park a couple weekends ago over at Nasker Park, and it was pretty successful. But the really interesting thing is um, Katie put out boxes, and they're eight by eight, and they're socially distanced six feet apart from each other. We didn't have to tell these people what to do. They all just go back into the box as their family gets there or their group gets there. And uh, we had a good time watching. Um, working with some other folks, uh, we're going to see a little bit more programming, but it was pretty exciting that we got the uh, orchestra, I mean, the uh, Wichita Symphony to play. They went to 12 different locations. It was a big hit. I think altogether, if you include all 12 sites, we had um, a little over 900 people show up which was really, really good. Uh, a lot of the comments were, hey, we're at a park that we've never been to before. Thanks for putting this in one of these parks. So it was really kind of neat. Um, other than that, things are just going as normal as I can be, uh, given the situation. So um, that's about all I got. Great. Did we have any other uh, questions or comments from the board? I got one more thing. So uh, as we've noticed uh, with Eddie being gone, we have a, a president and then we have a first and a second. And um, with uh, Mr. Goder coming in, that replaced one of our, our number one um, or our vice president. So we need to start thinking about uh, the, the elections. And I think that's something that we guys want, might want to start thinking about who you want uh, for those positions. And so next month that we could actually put it on the agenda and, and vote because I think we're, we're behind. I think we're supposed to do that this past summer. So we, we're behind on that. So something that we, I think I'm going to go ahead and put that on the agenda for next month. And if you guys don't, um, don't mind, so we can actually get that out of the way. Okay. Troy? Troy? Yes. Can you, I didn't know if you could hear me or not. This is Beth. Um, and this is on me and I apologize, but uh, April was the month where the president was to appoint a nominating committee and then elections were to be held in June. Well, we canceled our April meeting and then things have been kind of unusual since then. And all of a sudden it just, you know, one of those things that hits like a ton of bricks. Oh my gosh, we haven't done it. So we are behind and I don't know whose terms run out. I'll have to review that. Um, who would, who is, uh, you know, if anybody's uh, needing to be reappointed because the terms ran out at the end of March. So uh, that probably needs to be looked at as well. But if we could do these elections next month, that would be great because we're already halfway into the next year. Do you want to, are you going to send out the whoever's term limited and stuff like that when you find that out? Sure, we can do that. Well, most okay. definitely. And um, the nominating committee is supposed to be the first vice president and the second vice president. Well, since there is no first vice president, that's you, Tori. <laughs> so, <laughs> So it's kind of a small board. Um, usually people don't fight one another for the offices. So um, hopefully we can, like Troy said, get a slate and have it voted on at our next meeting. Okay. Do we want Eddie to like fill in for that second person? What's, I'm sorry. I didn't do we want Troy. Do we want Eddie to fill in for the second person on the nominating committee? I don't know why we couldn't do that. The bylaws I discovered are silent on how you fill an officer's position. So uh, just using common sense, it was, it was my suggestion we just fill it and then have the nominating committee go through the motions. So we need to probably first fill that first vice president position and then have that person plus you, Tori, 
be the nominating committee for the new set of officers. Um, okay. Or we could do it all in one meeting. Might be a little unconventional. I don't know, how would you all prefer to do it? Get it all done at once or do it in, in pieces? All at once mm -hmm. is fine. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry, we're having a real hard time hearing you guys for some reason. What was that, Hoyt, did you say all at once? Yes, please. Okay, I think that's probably, I mean, again, it's a small board. There's no real reason to chunk it up into two, so. Okay. Now we could have you and Eddie then work on a slate for the next meeting. Okay. All right, any last uh, comments or questions? You guys are doing a good job. Yep. All right, well, thanks everybody, and uh, meeting is adjourned.